And we are back to bring you closer to the Chinese Filipino heritage in this new season of Chinoy TV. And today we're about to discover stories about fighting hard for life, business, and passion, the Chinoy way. My name is Gretchen Ho, Wo Shi He Meilin, and this is Chinoy TV, Beihua Dian Shi Tai. Jia You, it literally means add oil, but for the Chinese, it is used as a cheer to encourage someone prior to a challenge or a battle. Today, learn how a very simple Chennai fought her way to being a mega woman and successful entrepreneur. Hers and other stories that will make you cheer Jia You today on Chinoy TV. establishment decades and decades ago, Chinese martial arts has maintained its kicks and punches of popularity despite the changing times. But if there's one thing that has kept Chinese martial arts so alive and kicking up to this time, it is the people who has made wushu their sport, pastime and passion. 一位师傅名叫蔡明仁，英文名字为Arnold Master Arnold, so how did you get involved in wushu? When I was 15 years old, wushu was a kung fu that time. That's martial arts. Eh, nainggan yung ako ng kaibigan ko na sumali sa mga wushu school dito sa Downtown Manila. Ah, alright. So you've mentioned kung fu. So what's the difference between kung fu and wushu? Ah, kung fu actually the word kung fu meaning I skill. Skill. While ang wushu it means martial arts. Oh, skill. Kaya kaya di lahat ng siya sabi mo you have a good kung fu. It's only in using in martial arts or any. Pwede rin pagluluto, pagligraphy. That's a good kung fu. That's a good skill, you yeah, mean. Yeah. So wushu is the martial arts yeah, yeah. itself. Wushu can be some people very interesting. It is based on China. In 1949, Chinese wushu was wushu became a national sport. The national wushu team will hold a wushu tournament every year. I heard that there are two kinds of wushu. So, can you share to us what is that all about? Right now, because uh, the wushu is segregated, uh, is divided into two. There's the taolu, mm -hmm. and the one is santa. Taolu is for the doing the form, for the aesthetic of the form, and yung tao, uh, santa naman is parang sparring. Ah, the taolu is what we did kanina, yeah, the, ano, the yeah, form. Yeah. And what's the other one? Uh, it's santa. Santa is the fighting facet of Wushu. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a combination of kickboxing, grappling, and throwing. Oh. Uh, yan ang pagkakadbana. While the Taolu is just mainly form. Haijide Kung Fu Xiong Mao Li de Shi Fu de Kou Tou Chan Ma? Ru Guo Ni Zhi Zuo Ni Neng Zuo de Shi, Na Ma Ni Jiang Bu Hui Zuo Chu Chao Yue Zi Di de Shi La. Well then, I will be more than who I am today because Master Arnold will teach me some wushu moves. Xiaoyo. Grab the hand and then kick. All right, and kick higher. Sa knee dapat. Then that. Ah, my wushu training may be just as flitting as a flying kick, but I've realized some things. Wushu is not just all about kicks and forms, punches and stances. It takes a lot of heart and guts with a few bruises and scratches. Very useful pag ano, may magnanaka or ganon sa yo. Takes a lot of discipline, techniques, and training to be an expert of this Chinese martial arts. 
What is your advice to all those people who want to try wushu? Number one, you learn the Chinese culture. Mm -hmm. It's very important because uh, it's the basic. Yeah, the teaching basic, you the Chinese, Chinese yeah, culture. Chinese culture, and mga kaman mostly is nas Chinese. Eh. Oh, okay. Even my Filipino students learn the Chinese words. Chinese words. Pagkatapos, uh, you learn to self de uh, self defense. Uh, ano pa? Then you learn uh, para sa stamina mo. And if you think you have seen it all, wait and see because I have some more energy for some wushu training. Tayo. But what makes Jasmine unique or stand out from all the other Chinese restaurants? I believe that what makes Jasmine unique is that there's a good blend between serving our comfort food and the service. Chinoy TV is brought to you by BA Securities City's Events Place Unsurpassed Elegance and Paralleled Ambiance for inquiries, contact 376-1892. Prestige Television, like a boss. Crown, the professional choice. Filipino Chinese Xin Lian Association. Henry Lee. Willie Chua Kim Tong. George Chu Chun Lin. Open up to everyday surprises with rib crackling. Eat that hugot, a oh wishy, oh wow. Doña Maria Premium Quality Rice, available in white and brown varieties. Doña Maria, the two in one rice. Chinese餐厅这个事业简直就像个战场 Jasmine is a fine dining restaurant here at New World Makati Hotel. It's known for its commitment to sourcing only the freshest and highest quality produce. 由于他们的执着, Jasmine在2017年荣获菲律宾Tatler首二时间餐馆特别奖 So that's uh, again a, a big award accolade for us because there's a lot of Chinese restaurants in the, not only Manila but in the Philippines. So to get the award two, two years in a row it uh, shows the commitment and the, the passion of the chefs and the service. Tony, I love the ambience of the restaurant. It's very chic, very elegant, and it feels very old Shanghai because of the dark color of the red. The name Jasmine, how did you guys come about it and why is it called Jasmine? So when you hear the name Jasmine, um, it somehow uh, gives you an idea of the fragrance, and um, delicate flowers, so it's somewhat easy to remember for the guests. So this is our pork shaw mai, mm -hmm. so one of the very popular um, dim sum. Our executive chef Wong Kam On, and the mm -hmm. other one is uh, Chef Wong Sinto, who uh, specializes in the dim sum mm -hmm. production. So this dim sum is handmade by uh, Chef mm -hmm. Wong Sinto. The food is, we try to keep it. Uh, very original. We have uh, two chefs from Hong Kong, and I think that uh, match between the design and the food is, uh, you know, it works very well. This one is a little bit firm. It means that it's full and packed with meat and shrimp. This is the hakao. It's one of my favorite dim sum. Mmm. Look inside. So much shrimp inside. Mm. It's the spinach dumpling. I like the combination of the taste of the shrimp and the spinach. We serve Cantonese food in our speciality. You know, now we're doing uh, country cuisines, so from different areas of China. But I think having uh, two chefs from Hong Kong really brings that unique and that uh, flavor that the people you know, enjoy. So a while ago, actually, I saw the, your staff 
slicing the pecking duck and every slice, I could hear the skin being sliced. It was that crispy. Oh, there's the skin. And a little bit of the meat and leek and cucumber and hoisin sauce. And the skin is so crispy. So crunchy. So, you already tasted the first way of the duck. We usually serve it in ways, so we're about to taste the second way of the Peking duck. Mm. Just hearing the crunch of the lettuce is actually enticing for people to eat. This is wow. our deep fried garupa mm. with sweet and sour sauce. There's a good balance of the sweet and sweetness and the sourness. This one is our beef brisket. I'm just holding the meat with my chopsticks and it's falling apart already. It tastes good. It doesn't taste it weird. Tastes it tastes light. Yes, that's the word. Tony Chinese food is already a part of the Philippine culture. So there are so many Chinese restaurants here in Manila. But what makes Jasmine unique or stand out from all the other Chinese restaurants? I believe that what makes Jasmine unique is that there's a good blend between serving our comfort food and the service. We have the service that makes you feel so at home. We're very flexible. We usually tailor to the guest request. And we find that the guest loves it here because of those small touches. Oh well, thank you so much Tony for letting me try out your food. Overall, I had a wonderful experience here at Jasmine. If you're looking for authentic Hong Kong cuisine, then you don't really need to spend much and fly all the way to Hong Kong. All you need to do is come here to Jasmine in New World Makati and experience Hong Kong. In view of recent events that celebrated the Chinese-Filipino relations, the Federation Filipino-Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry Incorporated held a press meeting headed by Committee Chairman Flores Lee, where they announced their activities for the month and which included an inspirational talk by President Domingo Yap. One of the activities was a basketball tournament co-organized with the Filipino-Chinese Amateur Athletic Federation last June 9 at the Chiang Kai-shek College Gymnasium, which was participated by the Philippine Sports Commission, the PROC Embassy, and representatives of the Chinese Filipino community. Built in the 1870s, the Chonghok Tong Temple stood as the oldest remaining Chinese temple in Manila until being disassembled in 2015. Now the temple stands once more at the Chinese cemetery as part of a refurbishment project by the Philippine Chinese Charitable Association Incorporated led by Chairman Dr. Benito Goyukpin and President Dr. James D. The inauguration was co-headed by PROC Embassy Charge de Fer He Xiang Chi and Consul Wang Xiao Tong and attended by over 150 Chinese Filipino community leaders. As the Philippines and China celebrate another year of friendship and diplomatic relations, the local Department of Foreign Affairs and the Embassy of the People's Republic of China hosted a cultural presentation that featured the China Henan Songshan Shaolin Martial Arts Troupe and the Bayanihan Philippine National Folk Dance Company on June 9. Each performance offered a glimpse of the vibrance and uniqueness of the two cultures, a fact very well supported by Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre, Foreign Affairs Undersecretary Ariel Abadilla, PROC Embassy Charge de Fer He Xiang Chi, Federation of Filipino Chinese Association of the Philippines Foundation Incorporated Honorary President Cheng Lai, Troop Head Gang Chie, and co-organizer Federation of Filipino-Chinese Associations of the Philippines President Chua Chi Cho. Recognized as a heritage park in Shandong, China, the royal tomb of Sultan Paduka Batara of Sulu has long stood as a symbol of the strong ties between China and the Philippines. It pays tribute to his historic mission to the court of Emperor Yongle 
in Beijing in 1417. To mark its 600th year, Federation of Filipino Chinese Associations of the Philippines and the Kaisa Heritage Foundation launched a photo exhibit along with a new book by Kaisa founder Teresita Ang Si in Intramuros, Manila last June 9. Witness to this momentous celebration which also involved a ceremonial turnover between Kaisa para sa Paunlaran and the Tocho Museum of Sulu Culture where the Foundation Vice President Joaquin C. Foreign Affairs Undersecretary Ariel Abadilla, PROC Embassy Charge d'Affaires He Xiangqi, Tocho Bureau of Culture, Radio, Television and Press Deputy Director Yu Li Hai, Princess Jaisal Kiram, and representatives from Dezhou, China. In continuation of their Philippines China Friendship Day celebrations, the Federation of Filipino Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Incorporated, held a table tennis tournament last June 18 with players coming from the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office, the PNP, Philippine Army. Philippine Sports Commission and Chinese organizations FFCAAI, FFCAPFI, FFCSAAI, and Tianxing. The accompanying program saw President Domingo Yap, FFCAAI President William Goshako, Committee Chairwoman Natalie Sia, FFCAPFI President Tsai Chi He, and Wa Cho Cha Chairman Tan Ching who took turns sharing encouraging messages and leading the oath-taking of players as well as the game's ceremonial opening. Hi, Xinwen Jiao Ji Jin Hui. Yu Er Ling Yi Ti Nian Liu Yu Er Ri, Xing Ti Wu Wan Shang Ti Shi San Shi Fen. Jia Fei Hua Wen Jing Zong Hui Zhong Zheng Tang, Zhu Ban Qin Qing Zan Song Fu Mu En Yin Yue Wan Hui. 大会由傅秀琼女士担任主持人1985, when I was doing my master's in Spain, I was an avid reader of glossy fashion magazines and I realized we didn't have anything like that in the Philippines because at that time, all our magazines were newsprint. Doña Maria Premium Quality Rice, available in white and brown varieties. Doña Maria, the two-in-one rice. Chinoy TV is brought to you by Nation Paper Products and Printing Corporation. Japan Parts Trading Center, distributor of Koyo Automotive and Industrial Bearings. Megatech Fine Invitations. Mayor Photo, professional photo and video equipment. Federation of Electrical and Electronic Suppliers and Manufacturers of the Philippines Incorporated. Nung Family. Chua Beng Teng Conchita Go Open up to everyday surprises with crispy patata My something A wishy Oh wow Doña Maria Premium Quality Rice. Mas mapapasarap ang kain pag masarap ang kanin. Miponica, just Ponica from SL Agritech Corporation. For me, business is not something that you do to earn money. It's a passion that you have that can actually earn money. Money to me is a consequence of doing something you love. It's not something you pursue. I am 
Sari Yap, founder of One Mega Group, and this is my profile. Behind the glitz and the glamour are stories waiting to be told about this well-known media entrepreneur. Let's slip through the pages of her life on the fab lane. I started One Mega Group, which was then called Mega Publishing Group, in 1991. And that was because I wanted to put up a fashion magazine, which we didn't have here. In 1985, when I was doing my master's in Spain, I was an avid reader of glossy fashion magazines and I realized we didn't have anything like that in the Philippines because at that time, all our magazines were newsprint. And then I also realized that, you know, when you go abroad, even in other countries in Asia, they had glossy magazines. So in my mind, like, it was something I liked. At the same time, there was nothing here. So in my mind, this was a business opportunity. First, I tried to produce it in the Philippines and I was shocked. I was like, oh my God, ano to, diba? this doesn't look like what I had in mind. So not only, of course, was the printing not up to par, um, actually, it was quite good, but not good enough. And so, I realized, okay, so where can we do this? And I found out, ah, Hong Kong. Yeah, so, so we started going to Hong Kong, little, I mean, every month <laughs> to produce it. Air freight, the whole thing. <laughs> and then, um, like, you know, looking back, I'm like, Paano ko ba ginawa <laughs> First, you really had no supporters like your distributors or your point of sale didn't believe that it could be sold your sponsors didn't believe that anyone would read it no one was ready we got a lot of critical acclaim from the readers because they, they they liked it no but um advertisers weren't ready at that time i knew you had to exist for like two or three years before they started sponsoring you the crisis happened so it's like I think do ako bumigay because that was the year also that I became clinically depressed my main investor was also very badly hit so like in his mind it's like sire I can't support you anymore like you know can I sell my my shares of this business and I'm like who's going to buy right at this time who's going to buy shares of any business at this time like you know we can't so it's like, like all of that um, put together, it all boiled down to becoming depressed. One day, I started crying and I couldn't stop. <laughs> but that was another challenge because you can't keep crying. The thing is, everyone was suffering, so I can't just give up. So, Miss Sari, what is a mega magazine all about? I mean, what's the philosophy behind a magazine? And is this an extension of your personality? Well, I guess in the beginning it was. <laughs> but now, you can't... I mean, I'm older, I'm no longer the market. When I started, it was easy for me to do it because I was talking to people who were like me. Mm -hmm. And of course, you age, but a magazine can't age. <laughs> because if you're still talking to the person who's like in her late 20s and early 30s, that's a different person. And so now, it is an extension of my personality in the sense that I like everything to be smart. I don't like things that don't explain. Um, there's no depth. You don't like nonsense. Yes. <laughs> so or just okay. totally superficial mm -hmm. things. My life has been a series of surpassing uh, what normally uh, could be considered a limitation and then but to me, it's not out of pride. It really is, for me, it was really a way to experience myself. Doña Maria Premium Quality Rice, available in white and brown varieties. Doña Maria, the two-in-one rice. Chinoy TV is brought to you by BA Securities. Cities Events Place. Unsurpassed elegance and paralleled ambience. For inquiries, contact 376 1892. Mayor Photo, professional photo and video equipment. Manuel Kiwa Ko. Enrique Chua. Albert Abaya. Tony D.
best tank. Open up to everyday surprises with Marchi's Crackling, every man's kainuman, a wishy oh wow. Donya Maria premium quality rice. Mas mapapasarap ang kain pag masarap ang kanin. May ponica, just ponica from SL Agritech Corporation. I am Sari Yap, founder of One Mega Group, and this is my profile. In college, I really wanted to go to, to the University of the Philippines because I knew that I wanted to be I was at that time I was an intellectual snob. Like I wanted to be with wherever the brightest people were. At the same time, I understood that it was I would get a, a different kind of um, education there as well. Come to think of it, things I remember are not so much the academic things that I learned. Of course, I do that too. But it's like it was really more the character building um, experiences of every educational um, experience that I've had. And that's where I'm very proud of the Filipino or even of myself. You are at the helm of this whole group and you are one of the biggest reasons why it has survived through the technological innovations. Uh -huh. um, is it uh, quite a burden for you being the CEO? Do you still have time for other things like family, love life? I'm a different kind of like founder. <laughs> Or a, I don't live to work, unlike a lot of uh, CEOs. CEOs. I'm a person like I can stay in the house and stare at the ceiling the whole day. I mean, few people can do that, but I can. Like, so you don't live and breathe work? No, not at all. What was your main goal for Mega Magazine? I wanted to help mold the Filipino wo woman into somebody who dressed well according to her own personality without having to like conform to everyone else. I was also trying to make sure that we weren't into materialism because uh, yes, it's a luxury magazine, but like we try never to present something as you must have it, otherwise you're not in. And I always wanted to inculcate pride in what was Filipino, that we are also world class. I had the concept that I was unlimited, that I could really do anything I wanted to do. My life has been a series of surpassing uh, what normally uh, could be considered a limitation. And then, but to me, it's not out of pride. It really is, for me, it was really a way to experience myself. I really wanted, like, one challenge after the other. I was always competing against myself. I don't do very well competing against others. I'm Sari Yap, founder of One Mega Group. I am Chinese Filipino. Well, that's it for today. I hope this episode inspired you and encouraged you to give your best and fight on, especially when life throws you the hardest of challenges. Together, let's cheer! Jiayou! My name is Gretchen Ho, I'm Shihe Meilin, and this is Chinoy TV, Beihua Tianshitai. Next week on Chinoy TV. We often hear about this most talked about generation, the millennials. And today we'll learn more about the millennials in the Chinese Filipino community. We used to do luxury signature shoes. From Marikina? Yes, from Marikina. I wanted to stand as a legitimate fashion designer's label. All that and more in this episode of Chinoy TV, Beihua Tianshi Tai.